Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us for the May installation of our Chris Reports Tips and Tricks monthly webinar. We put on these webinars once a month. You can always find out when they're going to be by going to www.marchgroup.net. You can also visit our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash user slash the Marks Group to view and participate in webinars um, from ages past. So, this week we are looking at using drill down. Uh, what is this whole drill down crazy concept? Why is it different than suppressing? What is the difference between a suppression and, and, and a hidden section? We're going to kind of explore that a little bit. I'm going to show you how to easily comment your formula code within your crystal formulas, whether that be within actual, uh, an actual crystal formula or actually within, within the select X where I'm going to show you a nice way to insert comments in there. So especially when you get some of those more complicated formulas, it really helps to kind of remind yourself what you're doing. Uh, if you're like me, uh, I come back to report sometimes months or years after the fact and, and sometimes I'll have to kind of relearn what I was doing to, to produce that formula or produce that logic for any given report. And comments can go a long way towards helping you out in the future. We're going to look at how to derive last week at runtime. We're going to use the um, handy dandy crystal function called last full week and we're going to actually pass that to both the minimum and the maximum function and then do some fancy date math to actually be able to uh, reliably always tell what happened last week without um, uh, requiring the end user uh, to uh, enter in parameter values. And if we have time, we're going to look at conditional running totals. I'm going to show you the method that I use to produce my uh, conditional running totals, which is a little differently than, than the um, crystal prescribed method of using the actual running total object. I feel that my way gives you a, a little more uh, flexibility as far as uh, the longevity of the report is concerned. So let's jump right in and talk about drill down. Now what I have here is a relatively simple crystal report uh, and what I basically have is just a list of companies and my, and my actual my report is grouped in this case by company name. So in this case I have multiple Acme's, they all appear here. Um, I have multiple blanks and I've created this special blank group which they all appear there and then so on and so forth. So we, what we have here is just a very simple group. Uh, basically drill down all that really means is that when, I, when I'm grouping within a crystal report, I get my, my group tree along the left-hand side, right? So what I can actually do is, uh, in the case of Acme, I can right-click and I can select Drill Down. And when I drill down, I actually get that whole group broken out on a separate tab. And more importantly, I get that, that group broken out on its whole page, on a whole separate page. So this makes it very easy for me to uh, just print sections of what ordinarily might be a very voluminous or complex report. So that's what drilling down does for us. Now where else you see the, the, the verbiage of drill down is actually in the designer. And that's actually something that you can control as part of your section formatting here on the left hand side. Remember whenever we want to format a section in Crystal, we're going to float over to the left hand side and right over our sections we're going to right click and go to format section and the first thing it warns me is that when I go to format my sections it wants to close down specifically my drill down tab. I'm just going to go ahead and say yes that's fine. What I want to show you is that other places you see that drill down could be places like in the group header. Well in this case we could hide and or suppress the group header. Now all that really does is put it uh, in a gray hatch mark there and now when I preview my report I don't get any of my group headers but that's the other place you're going to see that that terminology of drilling down and again if I go back into my format section and it's, uh, incidentally you can control the formatting for any one of these sections very easily and if, uh, if you're a power user what you can also do is certainly whenever you see this X-2 button here you can always programmatically control that option based upon a crystal formula which can certainly you know reach out to any field on the report or any field in the database but again drilling down is a nice way when you're using group trees a group tree like this 
to break out one of these branches into its own tab. And what's also nice about this is that now when I go to print this here, it will actually print just this tab, just this drill down tab. It won't print the whole report, even if I keep that as all. Very handy. Commenting code is something that I don't see enough, and to be honest with you, I don't do it enough for myself, and I really should. Uh, here's a good example. Let's pick one of these formulas out on my right-hand side. And da -da 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 -da. I have right here, for instance, I have a formula which lets me calculate the record age. And all it's doing is it's taking the current date, which in Crystal always returns today, and it's subtracting the date that the record was created on. In this case, that would be the create on date. Let me clean up the format here a little bit. So all this age formula is really doing for us is just calculating how many days have passed since that record has been created. Now a good thing to do, especially if I, if I feel I'm going to have to work or modify this report at some point in the future, it's always a good idea to comment some of, your, some of your formulas. Like, uh, for instance, a, a comment in a crystal formula takes the form of two forward slashes like that. It becomes green. The green text lets you know that it's going to be ignored by the crystal formula engine. So in this case, I just want to write myself a friendly little note, which says... new keyboard I apologize but anyway I hope you get the idea so now that I can actually comment my formula everything else within that formula everything prefixed by my double slash is ignored so now we can see that it's very easy to actually comment some of our formulas uh, you know for this formula you know it's, it's pretty basic it's only kind of one line um, so I guess it probably isn't a, a, a huge deal but especially when you have things like more complex formulas like this. It really always helps to always remind yourself, especially when you're going to be coming back to this report in maybe you know six months or a year, sometimes it's easy to, to, to forget what you did to make the report do what it's doing so well. In this case, you can always, always feel free to leave yourself a reminder with the comments. Okay, great. No, and I okay so let's move on deriving last week at runtime this is actually one of those things that uh, you think to yourself you know I have this report and, and it allows the end user to print uh, records created last week let's say for our example and so it's very easy to create a parameter field of a date range of a date range and I can see here this parameter field actually let me go ahead and delete this we're going to create one from scratch so again the uh, the idea is to have the report geared to only print last week's context well we know when records were created based upon this create on date and, and you know of course depending on what database you happen to be using that's going to be a little different this happens to be a gold mine database so I'm going to use my create on date so basically what I have to do is create a parameter I'm going to call this my date range and this is how you would normally do it and because we're prompting for a date we want our value type to be date and we're going to allow range values and then having the parameter, uh, of course, isn't enough to actually get the report selecting those records. Because you can see we've made our date range parameter. If we go back to our preview tab, we're still getting everything. So we actually have to plug that parameter into our select expert here under the report menu. And in this case, I just want to select the field. So I want my create on to be something. So in this case, I'm in my select expert window. I'm going to recommend always, whenever you can, Go straight to that formula editor. 
Whenever you're dealing with a crystal formula, go straight to the editor. You're going to see it in about a thousand different places within the software. So you really do need to get comfortable with this. And this is actually where virtually all of your heavy crystal lifting is going to be done. So again, we keep in mind what we're trying to do. We want our create on date to be within a date range, to be within this parameter date range. So all I have to say is create on is in my date range. And that, that's a nice little trick to use, especially when you're using a ranged value parameter. You can then, of course, use the in operator. I'm going to save and exit. Now I can preview my report. And as you would imagine, it's going to prompt me for a date range. As a matter of fact, this is my training database, so a lot, all of my records are fairly old. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back in time a little bit just so we can get something on the report. And there we are. So again, this is how you would typically do it. Um, whether or not the end user is always plugging in last week, last week's date range, is usually immaterial to a crystal reporter. We typically don't care because we provide them the option to easily grab last week. And it's typically never an issue. Unless the end user in question is starting to look towards maybe some report automation. Or maybe they're just sick and tired of plugging in last week's state range. So and so just, just to uh, clarify, when they refresh their report, they prompt for new. They open up their calendar control. And they select last Monday. And then they select last Friday from and to. That's how they ordinarily print the report. We want to make this easy for them. We want to actually be able to generate these dates at runtime. Actually, easier than it sounds. Well, the first thing we want to do is remove this date range from our select expert. So we're going to clear out our select expert and get the whole database again. And there we are. Good. So now what we're going to do is create a new formula and we're going to call this last week start. Because when we think about our, our deriving last week programmatically, we have to do it in two steps. We have to know the beginning date of last week and we have to know the ending date of last week. So we start with the beginning date. So our last week start is actually going to be There's actually a crystal function called last full week. We know it's a crystal function because it turns blue here. And we're actually, all we have to do is throw the last full week to our minimum function. And if you'll recall, when we've covered minimum and maximums before, the minimum and maximum function pull out the minimum or the maximum value out of a ranged uh, object or an array if you're a programmer. Uh, that might sound a little more familiar. So in this case, the last full week identifier contains all of the days in the last full week, but we want the smallest date out of that list, so we're pulling out the minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And here's a nice trick. Whenever you're dealing with multi-part formulas like this, do yourself a favor and drag them right on the report. Make sure they look right. So in this 